feeling good my name is so we are going to be checking out this video tied to the battles prophet muhammad fought was mentioned in the bible so let's check it out Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse number 10 up to 16 and I know Dr. White loves Song of Solomon so I brought this as a present for him <laughs> verse number 10 the daughters are asked about their beloved the daughters of Jerusalem who classical Jews interpreted to represent the believing Israelites at that time they asked about the description of this person and this is how they reply my beloved is white and red the chief amongst 10,000 his head is as the most fine gold, his locks are wavy and black as a raven in English. Only thing is, the same word for raven can be translated as Arab. What a big coincidence. For, you get more and more descriptions, and then you come to verse number 16, the most beautiful. His mouth is more sweet, yea, he is wholly desirable. Of course we know this person is desirable. Moses foretold him. First Maccabees is still expecting him, Dead Sea Scrolls are still expecting this prophet like Moses, New Testament is still waiting for him, 7th century Arabic sources are still waiting for him, yes, he is wholly desirable. In fact, the description matches Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to a T. My beloved is white and red. It's narrated in the authentic traditions that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's title was Habibullah, beloved of Allah. In Hadith number 6 of Shamayl Tirmidhi, we know that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, skin color was white with redness in it. His black, uh, his hair was black and wavy, and he was an Arab. Hmm. Really? Chief amongst ten thousand, you go to the biographies of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and you know that his followers were ten thousand men when they went to Fatih Makkah, opening of Mecca, when they came to be victorious over the persecutors like Moses was victorious over Pharaoh. In fact, Deuteronomy chapter 33 even references this, but I'll get to that if I get time. The interesting thing about verse number 16 is, in Hebrew it reads like this, Hikomamtikim vikunlu Muhammadim. In Hebrew the suffix plural im is a plural of attributes, and this could be translated as, His mouth is more sweet, yeah he is Muhammad. Now before Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him turned up, Jews could have seen this as just a description, just as a word. But as soon as he turned up and claimed to be a prophet, and these physical descriptions matched the descriptions in this, and he was a chief amongst 10,000 and he was an Arab, they would then see that God had left the clue of his name in the actual text, and from that time on, this should be recognized as a name. His mouth is full of sweetness and he is wholly desirable. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. This is Solomon's wife extolling the the handsome king solomon that she's going to be uh, going to be uh, marrying and the song of solomon is a beautiful celebration of human love and you have in this text uh, two hebrew terms that describe him as being full of sweetness and wholly desirable and if you look at them in the hebrew they rhyme with one another this is poetry this is poetry and so you're taking an adjective from a different language in poetry, in love poetry, and saying, ah, little Jewish boys would recognize that this is about an Arab prophet 600 years after Christ. This kind, this is not exegesis, this is eisegesis. It's not reading out of the text its meaning. This is reading into the text a meaning that it was never intended to have. To say this is a stretch is a major understatement. What is more, linguistic parallels based upon similar sounds are notoriously worthless. Unless there is a contextual reason to turn an adjective into something more relevant, such arguments should be rejected. Now, Makamadim. Is, this isn't the only place it's used. 
in the Old Testament. So if that's the name of Muhammad, then in 1 Kings 26, is Muhammad taken away from a house? If it's the same term, consistency would say so. Is Muhammad destroyed by fire in 2 Chronicles 36, 19? Same term. If you're going to be consistent, if this is where people, if this is seeing Muhammad in their text, then Muhammad's burned by fire in 2 Chronicles 36, 19. Did Muhammad become a ruin in Isaiah 64, 10? Now, you would never, ever make connection there. And yet it's the exact same term. So, I really believe that um, I have the best argument, however, right now. Here, here comes the end of this one. Is Zakir Hussein in the Old Testament? <laughs> See, it's on the screen, Zakir. You didn't look up there, but, but I've, even got, I've even got a whole screen just for you. The Hebrew root, Zakar, can mean a male, or it can mean remember, remembrance, or memory. Remember, triliteral roots can sometimes have very interesting meanings, especially in Semitic languages, and you know that if you know Arabic, and certainly true if you know Hebrew. So the question that I would have is, can we find Zakir Hussein in the Old Testament? Nexus 23, 13. Now concerning everything which I have said to you, be on your guard, and do not mention Zakar, the name of other gods, nor let them be heard from your mouth. So here we have a man reminding me of what that text says. Is it not a clear fulfillment? Zakar Hussein is in the Old Testament. I've been watching your debates and you were actually quite predictable. I knew you were going to find my name in the text. But can you find a passage that's got my description and mentions Birmingham too, Dr. White? <laughs> and can you also show me the same passage where Jews were interpreting this as a prophet to come? I've got quotes that show that Jews seen this as a future person. Then, let's go to Song of Solomon. Folks, I, I said Song of Solomon is going to be a gift for Dr. White. Do not think I haven't seen Dr. White's material before. Everybody was laughing at most of Dr. White's points. Oh, Muhammad thrown in the fire, etc. Well, Dr. Ma Dr. White, I challenge you, show me one place, anywhere in the Bible, where the word Muhammadim appears. It appears uniquely in Song of Songs, chapter 5, number 16. I've got the quotations for the Hebrew. None of them read the same. All Dr. White is doing is looking for words that come from the same root word and trying to say, look, the same words here. But Dr. White, do you not know we can do that with David's name too? Shall I start quoting David's name in Ezekiel 23? The context will look kind of ridiculous. And also another thing to show everybody that Song of Songs chapter 5 verse number 16 is unique. Every other passage that the Christians claim that Muhammad is found, if you translate it into a name, the sentence doesn't make sense. In this one passage, the sentence still makes sense. Another coincidence. What? No! Not 
Dr. White hasn't mentioned anything about the description. I don't think he can refute the fact that the word raven can be treated as Arab. And then Dr. White mentions, oh, lilies, that must refute balsam. But actually, is there another coincidence that in Genesis chapter 37, the Ishmaelites are carrying balsam? Whoa. Then in Psalms 84, Baka Valley is mentioned. Why is it called Baka? Because of balsam trees. And what's the name, ancient name of Makkah? Baka is Makkah Valley? Yes, it is. Also in this place, people do pilgrimage in this Baka Valley where the balsam trees grow, Psalms 84. Which place is named Baka is a valley where people do pilgrimage. And also, according, according to the Septuagint, in Psalms 84, verse number 6, it says, Here the lawgiver shall give blessings. Who is the lawgiver that came in the valley of Baka? Maybe Dr. White can tell us. It sure wasn't Jesus. And also that corresponds to Deuteronomy chapter 33 where it mentions somebody who's going to come in the land of Paran with 10,000 saints and a fiery law in his right hand. And do you remember Song of Solomon chapter 5, chief amongst 10,000? When you put it together, I, ch I tell you straight that the prophecies I've quoted about Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him are much more clearer than the prophecies that Christians point to about Jesus. Uh, it's much and you like can laugh, but I think you should read Hosea 11. So, also, Dr. White says that the word Muhammadin is an adjective, but can't adjective be named? What's your name, Dr. White? White, White's an adjective? So why don't you delete your name, Dr. White, if an adjective can't be a name? More always, not even an adjective. Go to the Strong's Concordance, it's a masculine noun. He says, well, oh, that's actually a single noun. Must not read Hebrew because it is being used as an intensive adjective. It is, it is being used poetically in poetic form with another intensive adjective in Song of Solomon 5.16. It's describing Solomon. The idea that this has some fulfillment because of balsam trees to someone from Arabia, to me, is the illustration of how far you have to stretch to make this kind of argumentation work. It simply doesn't work at all. Tell me somebody historically whose skin color was white and red, whose hair was black and wavy as an Arab. I remind Dr. White, um, please tell us if the word raven can be translated as Arab. Chief amongst 10,000. His name is in the text. Dr. White pronounces it in such a way that it sounds like, yo, this can't be Muhammad. Let's hear a rabbi um, recite and ask yourself, why did God put this in the text? That sounds like Prophet Muhammad. I don't know if you heard more of it. Yatav Galile Zahav, Mephaz, Mar'e, Bahur Ka Arazim, Hiko Mantakim, Vehullo Mahamadim, Vehullo Mahamadim. I did not take Song of Solomon out of context. Dr. White keeps saying he's talking about Solomon. I've got a source that mentions that Jews seen it as a future person. Also, how can it be talking about Solomon when, according to Jews and according to even uh, Muslims, Solomon was one of the most powerful people in his time, yet if this is one of these women, what does this mean? Making their rounds in the city, the sentinels found me, they beat me, they wounded me. Can you imagine King Solomon, the most powerful on earth's wife, getting beaten up? No, there's a lot of stuff that indicated to people this is talking about a future person. I think we have finished the Mahmadim. Uh, if, if you want to believe that an adjective in poetry that is in parallel to another phrase and used because it is in poetic rhyme 
is the name of a prophet when the vast majority notice that Zachary says well I can find a scholar over here that says this folks you can find a scholar that says anything I can find scholars that say Muhammad didn't exist I can find people who were Muslims who say Muhammad didn't exist so what I happen to think he did I think I can make a pretty good argument that he did but you can find a scholar who can say anything. The question is, can you find a consistent scholar who has a consistent worldview and will handle his materials consistently? That's the big thing. He says there's a lot of stuff saying that the Song of Solomon isn't about Solomon. Well, there's a whole lot more stuff saying there is. How's that? Like the vast majority of all Jewish commentary down to the centuries and all Christian commentary and everything else. That's, that's pretty easy if we're going to go to that level of, of debate. I mentioned the description of the Song of Solomon. Remember, nobody tonight told me that Muhammad peace be upon him's skin color wasn't white and red. His hair wasn't black and wavy. The word Arab is not there in the text. The word, fact that he's a chief amongst 10,000 and the name is in the text. If you were going to spell Muhammad, it's there in the text and it does not appear in the same form anywhere. Also, the balsam trees is mentioned in Psalms 84, the Valley of Bakka, an ancient name for Makkah where people do pilgrimage, okay. where according to the Septuagint, a lawgiver shall come. Dr. White pronounces it in such a way that it sounds like, yo, this can't be Muhammad. Mahmadim. 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 Must not read Hebrew. Guys, um, I understand what Zaki Hussein is trying to say, but in the Bible, it's not written in the King James Bible. None of the version actually mentioned his name Muhammad. That particular verse it spoke about Second Chronicle. There's nothing like Muhammad in it. I'm totally shocked this is happening. Actually, is Solomon trying to describe himself? Like my pastor said. Like, I don't know. Okay, fine. Talk about Solomon 5 verse 16 because of the all together. All together does not mean Muhammad. Why is it not written directly that Muhammad? And you know, in this age, in this present century, we don't make use of Hebrew translation. So why is that it's not written in the other translation of the Bible that Muhammad? Like, I don't know. I've, you can see me, you know, checking my phone to read the, you know, verses myself to confirm if truly, truly is written. And it's not written there. So I don't know why this man actually came across his own verse of this discussion because I don't understand. Ha, God. Well, that's so interesting to watch. I love um, the, the pastor's point of view and I understand um, Zaki Hussein's point of view. He gets it in his own way, he's right. His own way is right. But when I check through my through the Bible that I'm conversant with, it's not there. But I, I just want to know how did he get it? We know my Bible. The normal word of God, where is it written inside that this, this, this Muhammad? That's what I just want to clarify. If you can clarify it to me, I'll be happy because I've seen the proof. I'm not seeing it in the proof. But I'm not saying it's wrong. But maybe he has a different translation. Maybe he saw it somewhere else. And I, I, I need to know more about it. I want to know where he got those verses from. But that was a beautiful debate, guys. That was a beautiful. At least I was able to learn more about, you know, Prophet Muhammad, you know, about the battles and the rest. And that was beautiful to watch. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.